Hey everyone, welcome back to Unbiased Magic Reviews. I'm glad you're here. I hope that you guys are having a good week and I hope that you're staying safe. Today I have a magic book review for you. We're gonna be taking a look at Cards Against Reality by Lorenz Char. Now this little hardcover book, as the name uh, suggests, is about card magic. Uh, this came out last year and for $45 you can pick this up. It's 164 pages. There's approximately 32 items all together. Um, this is comprised of three main card moves with variations. That's the first half of the book. There's two very small essays in the book and then there's five main card routines. At the very back, there's three miscellaneous items that have to do with a pocket knife and coins. Um, at the very end of the book as well, Lorenz Char does give you a little final letter to you. It's kind of like a, a little message which gives you an idea of what his own thoughts are of what you probably would like out of the book. My initial impressions are that I'm really pleased with it. This actually exceeded my expectations. Usually I'm hoping that there's one or two things that are useful and I found the majority of the material in here really informative and useful. Now the magician who wrote this book, Lorenz Char, I first became familiar with his name from reading some things that he put out in Stephen Beam's uh, Semi-Automatic Card Tricks Volume 9. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that he helps Dennis Beer maintain his online conjuring archive, which I use extensively. And it shows in this book because all throughout the text, he does a lot of crediting and uh, there's a lot of footnotes to the different references that he makes, which is kind of nice. As always, I'm going to give you guys a good idea of what you can expect to find in the book. I'm going to show you a couple of demos and then some final thoughts. So the layout of the book is like this, where each section starts out with a black page and there's a description of what you can find, the move or the effect. And then it's followed up with a section that he calls background. And basically the background is um, a little history about how he came up with it, inspirational ideas, uh, references to other similar ideas and similar moves, which is really nice because I like to track down all that stuff. So people that are into that will also like it a lot. And then that's followed up with a detailed description of the move or the routine. And there's drawings that help you to understand what's going on. And then finally, at the end of the routine or the move, there's a, a section that's called random thoughts. And I really like that a lot because the random thoughts is more like uh, like final thoughts or, or additional ideas. And I really like that because it gives you other ideas of how to apply the move um, or other ideas of uh, or variations for the routine, uh, which is really kind of nice. Uh, so you're going to learn lots of moves in here. Even though I'm telling you there's three main moves, he teaches you all kinds of other card moves within the card routines and stuff like that. So you're going to learn lots of stuff. So the three main card moves, let's talk about those briefly. The first move in the book is called the longitudinal slide shift. Okay. The author himself tells you that he thinks that this is the best piece in the book, the most valuable piece in the book, and I have to agree. I think you're gonna end up using this more than anything else in the book. And what this is, is it's a basically in the hands, it's a type of pass. Now, the nice thing about it is that it's a pass that doesn't have to be done quickly, so that's really good, and it really is a type of pass that you can see from all angles, from the front, from the sides, you're not gonna see anything, which is really nice. Now I would demo the move for you guys, um, although the author himself put out a video showing a demo himself in his own hands, so I'm just gonna show you guys what it looks like in his hands.
All right, so you guys took a look at the move and uh, in the book here, he spends about 15 pages going over all the variations of that pass, how you can use it as a cover pass, how you can use it from a spread, from a dribble, how you can use it as a turnover pass. So there's all kinds of variations and applications of the move. Um, you actually will fool yourself in the mirror doing it. You'll probably learn it in one afternoon. Difficulty wise, I think it's like intermediate level. It may take you a few days till you're really comfortable with it, but it's not difficult at all. And the main reason is because you don't have to do it quickly, which is really nice. Probably is the most valuable piece in the book overall. The second move in the book is called Satisfriction, Friction. And this is a jog control move where you can control either one or multiple cards. Um, just like the first move, he goes over all kinds of variations of that move where you can use it from a fan, from a spread, how you can do it with one or multiple cards. What is interesting is he does make a reference to Tom Gagnon because Tom Gagnon actually independently came up with a very similar multiple shift himself, um, which you can find in Tom Gagnon's newest book, Gagnon Unfiltered. Uh, another book which I'm studying, if you guys turn to page 252, The Four Flourished Multiple Shift, this is the move that he makes reference to. So if you have the book, you can just check it out there. Um, I probably will be doing a review on that sometime in the near future. Um, so Satis Friction, it was another move that's very easy to learn. In fact, it's even easier than the longitudinal slide shift. Um, you'll be able to immediately use it. Uh, very useful and he again spends like another 15 pages going over that one move alone Finally the third move in the book is called the marrow shuffle. This is a false table riffle shuffle uh, Which is a combination of ideas from Herb Zero as well as Jack Merlin um, I thought that it was not difficult at all to learn and a lot of fun to practice. I think something that um, you probably will use if you do any kind of table card work. In fact, let me show you what it looks like. So here's what the marrow shuffle looks like. I've got this deck in red, black, going from ace to king, ace to king. Let's show you guys so you have an idea of what this looks like. And what we're gonna do is just separate the deck in half. Give it a shuffle like this, push them together. And the deck hasn't changed at all. It's still in red, black, ace to king, ace to king, ace to king. Not one card has moved. So that's what it looks like. All right, just to briefly touch on some of the card routines that you guys can expect to find here. There's five main card routines in this book. I liked three out of the five. Uh, the first one is called One for Mr. Mayhew, and this is a center deal demo. Uh, like I had mentioned earlier, if you can do a second deal, then you can do this routine. Um, it really is more for people that are into gambling demos. Um, I didn't think it was difficult, and I think it's something that probably a lot of people would like. The second routine in the book was my favorite routine, and it's called Go Stop, and this is a version of the classic stop trick. What I really liked was that it's from a shuffle deck in use and it's the everything is in the hands of your spectator, which I really liked. So imagine this, you shuffle a deck of cards, you let your spectator shuffle them, you take them back, you take out one card as a prediction, then you hand them the cards, you tell them to cut the deck and start dealing cards face up. They can stop whenever they want, where they stopped matches your prediction. That's it. Very simple, easy to understand routine. It's become my favorite routine in this book. I would recommend that you guys check that out. The next routine in the book is called All Bags. Um, not a routine that I would use, but some people may like it. It's a routine where you take out a bag that has like a letter on the front of it, and you have a deck of cards. The spectator uh, eliminates cards they whittle down the deck down to one final card. And then you mention that you've made, you know, let's say for instance, it's like the six of hearts. You tell them that you've predicted it. There's an S on the front of the bag. So that stands for six. 
they may look at you funny and then you turn the bag around and the rest of the letters are on the back of the bag that says six of hearts. The main reason I didn't like the routine is because it uses a gimmick deck. So that's something that I really, I just didn't really like the, the actual mechanics of the routine because I didn't like the idea of having to use a highly gaff deck. That's my own personal preference. Some people may like that. The next routine in the book is called Cool in the Gang, and the author suggests that that's a routine that probably a lot of people are gonna like a lot, and that is a version of the classic follow the leader routine. Now, personally for me, I've been using Roberto Giobi's follow the leader routine for quite a while, so it was actually hard for me to stop using that one and try out this one. What's nice about this routine is I thought it had a couple of nice, really su nice subtleties in it, um, which I'm gonna show to you guys. Definitely, I really like the idea um, how you can show at one point that all the cards in one packet are black and all the cards in the other packet are red. In fact, let me just show you guys what that looks like. All right, here is a quick demo of Cool in the Gang. Um, I'm just showing you guys the main sequence of the routine. I'm actually not showing you the introduction because I'm not trying to expose the routine. I just wanna show you guys what the main sequence looks like. Like any of these follow the leader routines, the best thing to do is have the spectator count out the 10 black cards in your hand and count out the 10 red cards because that will be the most convincing way to start these types of routines. A leader card is selected from each and the packets are turned over. You explain that the cards follow the leader. In other words, over here we have a red card, over here we have a black card. If we swap packets, then now these cards are red and you can see there's a red card there and these are black there's a black card there if we take both packets and put them behind one leader now these should all be red and you can see that they are red cards likewise if we put them behind the black leader now they all become black and we can check that out you can see that they have become black so what matters is where the cards are if what leader they're behind so here we should have red and here we should have black. So if we swap these, all of these cards become black, all of these cards become red. Now you look kind of skeptical, so maybe I should show you. So you can see, look, these actually are all black cards here. Likewise over here, these are all red cards, of course. You could see that. So red here, black here, unless we swap the packets, because then now these become red cards and these become black cards. Let's try one more time, in case you missed it. <laughs> All right, take a look. This is red and this is black. You can see we're down to one last card. Remember, as long as you're in front of them, they're gonna match. And we switch these one last time like this, just give it a moment, you'll see. Now we've got red here and we've got black there. They sort themselves out. And that gives you guys an idea of what cool in the gang looks like. Finally, the last routine in the book that has to do with cards is called Coincidencia Banal. And this is based on Juan Tamarez's total coincidence effect, which if you read Sonata, you may have learned it there. Uh, the version that he taught in Sonata used a red deck and a blue deck. If you uh, picked up Juan Tamarez's um, Magic From My Heart DVD set on the first DVD, he has an updated handling of Total Coincidence, which uses just one deck. So um, I think he called it Impromptu Total Coincidence, actually. So you may like that. Uh, personally, um, the version that is taught in here, the, the Coincidencia Banal, it's not a routine I would do just because there's a heavy setup involved, but that setup can, you can get into that setup from Mnemonica. So if you use the memorized stack Mnemonica, you may like this routine because you can get right into it from Mnemonica. Otherwise, you'd have to set up the deck ahead of time. So for me, I really didn't really like that. Personally, I prefer actually uh, Caleb Wiles uh, 26 factorial. I just prefer that over this, but that's my own personal preference. You may like this version, um, but definitely it is a decent routine, um, but it just has that one downside that there's a heavy setup involved. So that's the one reason why I wouldn't do that. The two small essays that you can find in this book are mostly just observations, um, some tips, 
from his own experiences performing magic for people, things that he's done to make his own life easier. I thought they were very useful and I thought that was good advice. The three pieces at the very end of the book, uh, there's a color changing pocket knife move, which I would never use, but somebody might like it. Uh, there's a couple of other little pieces that have to do with coins, uh, which again, those two simple small coin ideas are not things that I personally would really use. He had an idea of how to get a coin from a cap and how to take two coins and smack them together and they become one coin. I really wouldn't use that stuff, but some people might like it. Uh, overall, I really like the book a lot. In terms of negative aspects of the book, I'll tell you guys that I really didn't like the drawings in the book. I thought that the drawings could have been a lot better. Uh, the other thing I really didn't like was that there was actually a mistake in the book. So there's a section in here um, where uh, he goes from, and, and if you guys are interested to see it, the mistake, it's actually on page 77 uh, where he goes, there's, fig, there's a figure eight and then they make a reference to a figure nine, but there's no figure nine, it just goes to figure 10. So there's no figure nine, it was omitted from the book, unfortunately. So that's kind of an error right there. Um, but you can figure out the move just um, from the text itself. But overall, I think that's the biggest negative aspect of the book was the drawings are not very good and they're hard to understand. Um, I got more out of the text than from the drawings. And there's actually, one of them is actually omitted from the book, which that Unfortunately, whoever proofread the book totally missed the boat on that one. So that being said though, overall I think the book really is good and I think you're gonna learn a lot. Each page is just chock full of ideas. Uh, definitely something you're gonna spend a lot of time studying. Even though it's such a tiny little book, you're gonna spend a lot of time reading it and rereading it because you're gonna get a lot out of the book. So I would highly recommend this to you guys. I would rate this as four out of five stars. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else Lorenz puts out in the future. So if you guys have any questions about this or anything else I review, just leave me a comment below. As always, thanks for tuning into my reviews, guys. I'll see you on the next one.